Oh, dude, that Smiley Kaufman for 61. Wow. I'm Smiley Kaufman, and this is The Smiley Show. It is The Smiley Show. It is day three of our 2024 Masters Journal. And what a day it was. Man, that was that was one of the more electric finishes uh, in, in, a, in a major on, on a, a moving day after a match. On a Saturday. <laughs> Just so good. But, Smiley, I think before, we have to rewind the clock a little bit. We have to go back early Saturday. Some big breaking news. No, you... I want you to just walk me through your day. Okay, well, that's that's a perfect tee up because my day started pulling into the media a lot around 8 a.m. with uh, my colleague, Brian Fisher, and we had one goal in our minds, and it was we're going straight to the golf shop, and we we're hunting for the most coveted item that one can obtain at the Masters Tournament. And it was looking a little bit bleak for us. It was a long line. It was a 45-minute wait, and we got in for, there. For this item. For this item, forty well, forty five minute wait to get in the shop. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then from there, it's just a frenzy. And I'm happy to report, happy to break this news on the Smiley Show. We got a gnome. <laughs> we got a gnome. We obtained a gnome. His name is Larry. He is the official show mascot of the Smiley Show. And I, I'm just glad to give him a good home. I I, I just feel what I a feel guy. a kinship with Larry. Guy. I feel a bonding moment with Larry. I, I just I'm glad I'm glad I got one. I, d I didn't think it was going to happen. I'll be honest. You know, uh, this this guy's definitely a Larry. Is he? There's there no? Nope, there's not like a a bio on like what his name could be. Um, yeah, he's he's always going to be a Larry. But uh, were there any alternates? I, I think uh, Steve was one. Uh, Re Reggie Reginald, uh, <laughs> Gerald. Oh, Gerald's great. That's what Harold Varna would uh, named his head cover was Gerald. That's it, it. It's a it's a name that works for a lot of inanimate objects. Uh, this gnome included, but he just feels like a Larry to me. I see a Frank. <sighs> Could be a Frank. I'll tell you what. If you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Second of all, take a look at this gnome. If we're missing any good name options, just drop them in the comments. For now, he's Larry. Either confirm Larry or add your suggestion. And then we'll come back to you. We'll let you know what the official name of our show mascot is when we get there. Well, there you go. And then, and then what else? So you, so you, did, you, did you walk the golf course with this thing in your hand? I did not. I left it. I left it back in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, the press building. So you walk. All right. So you, the press building is not far away though. So yeah, you take a quick little shuttle down the back, it drops you next to the scoreboard. So you drop off Larry, then you go to the golf course and just do a little walk. Well, I, I, I dropped off Larry, uh, grab who, a pimento cheese sandwich with chips on it that's, with that's, that's kind of my play right now but I, I went up i did a little work and then i went out and watched uh joaquin neiman and minwoo lee play. how did your one and done pick play today you know i really felt like it was important to be out there <laughs> for joaquin i want him to see me out there i'm not an absentee owner i don't you know fold <laughs> when the going gets tough you know it's like the it's like the the footsteps poem you know when when there were when it goes from two sets of footsteps to one it's like did you abandon me no joaquin i was there carrying you was out there pulling for you, and I tell you what, he had some good shots today. He he, he shot yeah, seventy one day, uh, made some birds. He's a striper, dude. He he, you said this before the tournament. He there are a couple putts he could have made. Oh, you don't say. I mean, it, it's crazy because you're watching. You're like, dude, you actually could be winning this one and none for me. You're so close. A hot take. I don't think he should be a blade guy. Oh really? Eh. You, you want to go to a little? Caveat? I think his, I think his hands get too low. I, I just think if he maybe had a mallet, uh, I'm. Eh. Oh yeah. So Joaquin, if you're listening, maybe we should take a peek at mallet, mallet. time. I, it helps Scotty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I, just my take. May, maybe I should speak to him as a tinkerer to another, you know, maybe future tinkerer to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm your guy here. I'm, I'm your one and done chooser. I have your best interest in mind. Good for you for going right into the live well at the first, the first major. Yeah, I mean, I just felt like I needed to be there for him, and also, I mean, the chef, dude, Min Wu. Yeah. I, it, it, That's it, our dog. It was. I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, this is my uh, my favorite moment of this tournament thus far. Was watching both those guys hit their approach shots on fourteen, because Minwoo hit like probably a gap wedge, like drove it in low, used the backboard, rolled it back to like two feet, and I was like, that was a sick wedge shot. Are you the shot. guy in the crowd when 
a golf ball spins, you just lose, lose, just lose your mind. I was, I was so reserved with my claps. I was not giving out applause for both those shots. I was like, oh, great <laughs> shot, great <laughs> shot. Couldn't even help himself. Like I, I, I didn't just clap. I was like, audibly, great shot. Because then Joaquin, he, uh, then we hit like a three wood. Joaquin hit drivers. He's like thirty yards up or something, twenty yards up. But he's like on the left side in the pine straw with like a tree on his right side, and he goes upstairs with a wedge. Had to be like a lob wedge or something, sand wedge maybe. Lands it like five feet left, maybe a foot past, spins it back to six inches, taps it for birdie. I was like, that is artistry. Just loved watching those guys. There you go. And that and that set the table really because then I came back and watched the rest of the day. And that's where we should go here is let's get into the action today because this is going to be so simple, the show. There are six guys we need to talk about, and they're just in descending order of scores. It's going to be e as easy as it gets. We're going to start at the top. Scotty Scheffler leading the tournament at seven under. Uh, makes some birdies early, chips in a one, makes some bogeys early, really makes that turn and then doubles 10, uh, which was, uh, it was a tough, he, he, he hit his approach shot long and then the, the chip kind of back was not great. And he ends up three putting from there. Bogey's 11, 12 pulls his tee shot or hits his tee shot long, has to kind of chip back into it at that point, very easily could say, uh, you know, just not my day, just not my tournament. You know, that's going to, another guy's going to go out and win it. Makes eagle at thirteen, comes all the way back to post, uh, you know, to, to to end at seven seven under. I guess that's one under for the day. Shoot seventy one. Uh, just your your thoughts on Scotty out there today, and just you know what he's set up going into Sunday. Well, I mean, we're all not surprised to see him at the top of the leaderboard hanging into Sunday, and why from showed the statistic of Scotty Scheffler and what he's doing this year with his middle irons, the the category from one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy five yards. Uh, they showed the leaders of all time, uh, and all three were Tiger Woods. And the proximity was right around 27 to 28 feet uh, away from the hole, which from 150 to 175 yards over a course of a season, it's pretty dang good. Um, Tiger Woods, well known for being one of the best iron players to ever play the game. But Scotty Scheffler this year from that, from that yardage is currently at 21 feet unbelievable unbelievable you can't even like describe you i mean it's just stupid what he's doing but what i'm getting to here is we know how talented scotty is he's been able to get up and down he's chipped in uh on the first hole today he hold a bunker shot at 12 in round one so he's able to save so much in a round and and really when things are going south like you just mentioned making that big putt on 13 finally getting that augusta roar and a big putt at 15, and and birdieing 18 to a hole that was pointing ridiculous today. That hole location was a joke. Hardest hole in the course today, statistically, and right? And 17, yeah. Yeah. and which he made bogey, so a nice bounce back on 18. And I think heading into tomorrow, this is where I feel like Scotty can can step up and say, you know what, this is you're in my era now. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to win a major championship, you have to you have to come and beat me, and I'm looking at Scotty tomorrow and the one th huge glaring difference between Tiger Woods and Scotty Scheffler is the intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. When you step on a tee and with Tiger Woods and, and the fans that would cheer for him, there was a hundred percent just the scariness of, of Tiger being able to, intimidate you and, and knowing that you weren't going to be able to talk to tiger that day and, and talk about your kids and talk about whatever with Scotty, there seems to me to be a little bit of openness, like mm -hmm. approachable, you know, not as scary as tiger woods. And to me thinking about tomorrow and how the day goes and, and if, if Scotty doesn't win, it's, it's because that if he's got to approach the day, like a dog, mm -hmm. like Kobe Bryant, like Michael Jordan, like all of the greats and of Tiger Woods, the players that and, and athletes that approach these big days with an attitude of you ain't talking to me. And I think he needs a little bit of that tomorrow. And we saw a couple fist pumps today that the competitive side of Scotty Sheffer, which he has, mm -hmm. we everybody talks well about documented. How, he's talked Sam about Burns, how competitive he is. Table tennis, yeah. But we need the dog of that competitive side to come out tomorrow of like, Hey, you're not beating me. Like it, the most intimidating thing about him is just watching his golf ball and where he hits shots and feeling like you can't catch up. But you also can go talk about, Hey, how was your Christmas dinner that day? 
um, this past year or like, you know, talk to me about uh, how the nursery's coming along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like we don't need day, yeah. any of that, Scotty, yeah. to show up tomorrow. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because I, I, I thought a lot about this and seeing the way the pairing shook out because this is Colin Morikawa is I don't know how close they are, but they played on multiple Ryder Cup teams and President's Cups teams together. They uh, they're both tailor made guys, so they, they have some sort of you know, kinship through that. Um, I, for me, part of the and I, I, having not played on the tour, I don't know how this lands for these guys, but there's like this inevitability about Scotty right now that's almost scarier than the persona, you know, himself. It's like no matter, and I feel like I'm taking that from the quotes I've heard from guys being asked about in the last few weeks. You know, when he's kind of got his putting stroke back, he won two times in a row, almost won the Houston Open, where it's just like, yeah, man, when that guy's playing good. We just, when he's putting good, like we just don't have a chance. And I don't know if there's like a silent assassin thing there happening where he's like this nice guy that you can talk to about the nursery or whatever, but you're just like, how the heck do I, am I supposed to beat this guy? I can't get it done. Um, we were talking before the show. I think it's the perfect time to fit this hypothetical in. Was asked this question earlier tonight. Who do you think completes the career grand slam next between Scotty, Rory, Jordan, and Colin? I mean, the odds would say now you would just take Jordan next because the odds would say you would take Jordan and then you would and then you would go to Rory. But if Colin Morikawa wins tomorrow, it's he's kind he's of got best the, suited to win a U.S. Open, right? Yeah, and it's crazy to me and that Colin Morikawa just you know winning a COVID PGA Championship at TPC Harding Park and then you know winning that Open Championship where. It seemed to me like got some lucky breaks down the stretch to win that week. Coming down the stretch, I think battling with Jordan Spieth, if I recall, um, who didn't get the breaks down the stretch. And oh, golly, if he wins tomorrow on a year in which it he's played very poor, right? Um, It'd be know, kind of out of nowhere. And just the last, it's a good he, he backdoor career. Nobody slam. saw him win in Japan. That so bad, yeah, that's right. The last time he was in, really in contention was. Uh, besides winning the Zozo was the century and and just to totally threw up on himself on the last four holes, losing that to John Rahm down the stretch. And I guess it just kind of begs the question a little bit of it. It doesn't, we don't care. It just matters. Can you win majors? Yeah. And I, I think people are just like, okay, all right. We don't care about your stats. We, we care that you're mentally prepared and, and can and handle these conditions and, and it, I don't know why I'm just so shocked to see him in the final group, but all credit to him for for being so mentally resilient uh, to get out there this week and play in these conditions and, and be at, uh, you know, one shot back of, of Scotty heading into tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, that, and he's so he's six under. He uh, he shot 69 a day. Uh, you know, he was, as we discussed yesterday, and, and we should pull the odds back up again, but he had the third shortest odds uh, or no, I mean, I'm sorry, the fourth shortest odds behind uh, Scotty, Max, and Bryson entering the day. Uh, and, and so there was something there where the bookmakers thought, you know, hey, this guy's got a couple major wins, the experience, like he's a guy that could, could get this done. Uh, but interesting to hear that, you know, I mean, I, I feel the same way in general. I mean, I think that, you know, that he if he hangs there tomorrow, he's obviously an elite player. His stats are good, too. I'm just looking yeah. at him. I was, like, just, I was just curious. His iron game's really good this week. Yeah. Uh, putting it really nice. Well, it's, it's just so interesting for a guy like that because it's, you at the top of his game, you know he's one of the best in the world. We just haven't seen a ton of that since the Open Championship win, you know, and, and, and so it's just it's hard to know. But, I mean, that's why I say, like, I don't mean any disrespect to Colin Morikawa when I say could he backdoor a grand slam, but that the, the manner in which he's done it against well, he's just, he the just way fired the other his guys. Coach. Just yeah. fired Mark Blackburn. So you're just thinking. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he fired Mark Blackburn wow. uh, right before San Antonio. So that's why I've been so down on – on yeah. a player, it's like it seems like he's searching, right? But I don't know. Maybe he got yeah. what he needed and said, I, I think I know exactly what I'm doing and has figured it out. Now, let's go to uh, in, in solo third, Max Homa, <laughs> five under, uh, shoots 73 today in a group where, you know, I don't know how you feel about whether or not these guys were uh, feeling the pressure. You good up there, buddy? I, I, have, the, I, have, the, I have, have you muted. We're just. Okay. <laughs> Do you want some? Do you want to drink some water? You sure? All right, no water. Okay. You just, just keep talking. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna leave this all in. It's good. It's good for you to see behind the scenes. Uh, I, I mean, do you do you think there was any like final group jitters there today? Because you know Max shoots 
Uh, Max shoots 73 and Bryson shoots 75. Now Bryson, Bryson <laughs> hold out from the fairway for birdie on 18, which is I mean just, that was LOL. I mean just amazing, just a, an, an amazing way to finish uh, to finish the, the final group on a Saturday. But I mean, do, do you feel like a, a little bit of that got to those guys today, and that's why they shot those scores? Um, his putting's gotten worse every day. He blacked out the first round, made absolutely everything. Yesterday looked pretty crappy on the greens, and today no good either. Um, and I just. I, I just can't trust his iron game. I told you this last night. Uh, I, I trust his his driving. I trust his putting, but I, I don't trust his iron game uh, into these small sections and firm greens. I know he's going to be coming in high and soft, but I, I just don't necessarily trust Bryson tomorrow. But man, what a huge hole out to just keep him within striking range. Did you see the thing on his irons earlier in the week? Yeah, the bulge and roll. What do you think about that? Sounds like a great fantasy team name. <laughs> Wow, that's actually a good idea for like my next one and done pool. Oh yeah, Bo- there you go. bold and roll. It's going to be a really deep cut. Like the, the 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 fifteen people who read those insider quotes on. I mean, do you think there's anything to that? I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough I, to even know. I mean, is it like twist taste twist face technology? That's the way I understand. It. It's like if you hit it on the heel or hit it on the toe, it like straightens it out. Which I I could use some of that. I mean, I, I will accept as much AI as offered to me. Uh, so, okay, so so those two guys, I guess we covered both of them. The, the guy sandwiched in between the two of them is solo fourth, Ludwig Oberg, uh, who shoots a 70 today, backing was up. so close to being really oh, good, too. He was 400 through 13, man. Like, yeah. he hit this sick little shot in the 13, birdies it, and then just hit a crappy wedge on 14. Got a bad break on the first putt, but 15, he, he drives it just over uh, with his fairway wedge just over the green, and... And I know it's a tough pitch, but just I don't know. Uh, it was a it was a big mistake, understanding that you needed to be past that pin. Mm-hmm. And if anything, like leave it where Scotty Scheffler did, just left of the hole. Uh, so that was just I think the rookie side of Ludwig came out on that pitch shot on fifteen because you can't make a six there after yeah. hitting it over the water. And, and I get it if the ball would have really rolled past, but it 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 was only over the green by six or seven yards. So, yeah. so to hit it there and um, not be able to get it down in three is uh, pretty poor. I, I just, I mean, I, overall, I'm just really, really impressed with him. I mean, I think even the fact that that's our reaction to the way he played where it's like, hey, he could have played a lot better and that's the expectation versus this guy's playing in his first major and he's solo fourth heading into Sunday says a lot about Ludwig. You know, I mean, I, I think it's, I, I to me, it's just, you know, he's a dog. He's a dog. <laughs> and, and, and he, and he kind of in, in similar, similar, but different fashion to Scotty. I mean, I feel like every time he played a hole poorly today, you know, they're, they're cutting away to him as he's walking off the green. He's got a big smile on his face. And, and to me, it's just that just speaks to like that sort of silent assassin mode where he might be the most, you know, he's genial, friendly. friendly guy. You talked to me the other and day. He's just dismantling you. Yeah. We're putter brothers. <laughs> he's so friendly. And I think Joe's been really good for him. Yeah, uh, I, I think they had a really nice game plan coming into the week. I really do feel that the t- that team of Ludwig and Joe and uh, Peter Hansen, his coach, and I believe Hunter Stewart does some stat stuff for him. I, I just think they they know what they're doing. And Ludwig has been trained since he was a, since he was a kid. And I just feel like his mental game and I, I, we talk about it all the time with him, but his mental game is is up there with Colin Morikawa and just mm. I feel like these guys, you know, they're able to calm their breath. They're able to walk slowly and handle the big moment. And and after the round, he even said, um, somebody asked him, you know, how do you handle tomorrow? And and the the obvious answer when anybody's asked that question, they're like, you know, just treat it like any other day. But Ludwig didn't say that. He said, you know. I am thinking about tomorrow. I I do want to embrace tomorrow. I I know it's normal to think about these things. So he he just has the correct mindset heading into tomorrow um, in a day in which he's never experienced before. Maybe uh, he goes out and shoots 76 tomorrow. I'd be surprised. I think he's going to be in the hunt. Uh, But regardless, I think just getting a taste of what it feels like down the stretch will be play, you know, that'll, that'll, be so crucial for him just to get that experience uh for not only the rest of the three majors but when he gets back here next year i think in very different ways 
no matter what happens tomorrow for Ludwig Oberg and Max Homa, it's just great to be at the top of the leaderboard on a Saturday. Both these guys, we know they have the stuff to, to be major winners. And, you know, we, you talked to Max at length about, you know, the ways in which he's trying to kind of change his prep and, 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 and you know, play majors better because that's been the one sort of sticking point in his game thus far. I think no matter what happens tomorrow, it's it's going to be good to you know, get get that sort of experience. And I'm not saying that they're not going to win. I mean, anything can happen tomorrow, including both those two wearing a green jacket uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, but I do love hearing that from Ludwig where there's sort of this reflective thing where I'm not going to pretend that I'm not you know, in this moment or, right. or, or, and then I'm going to shy away from it. I'm going to lean in tomorrow and just kind of do my thing and play my game. Either I win it, which is amazing, or I don't. And I learn a lot of things from it. Totally. That's the right, the right mindset. And even like the next guy, Max Homa, I, I think to me was the day like he was the most potentially off and he hung in there. I think Scrapped today was, pars and I think, pars and I think pars. today was a really crucial day for him to not play his way out of the tournament. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I, I think I have this right. He, he he made 17 pars and one bogey. And, and just, you know, I, I know the conditions were what they were yesterday, but that sort of resiliency of just like, I'm just going to find a way and just get it done and keep myself in the tournament. And here he is sitting solo third, two shots off the lead with a chance to win a major. And Did, that's that's yeah. all you can ask for. Didn't do anything great, but didn't do anything bad. Didn't play his, say, his self out of the tournament. 18 more holes of, 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 you know, something that I feel like he can – Pull off tomorrow. How cool would it be to see Max Holmes slip on a green oh jacket? Gosh, be amazing. Huh. And, and in terms of guys that would appreciate it, I mean, I think Max, you know, is it's going to mean his first one's going to mean a lot to him. And to be able to put the green jacket on for your first one, that would be pretty sick. So, uh, do you want to do you want to briefly recap? Did, did you see the whole Bryson's uh, the, the 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 way he played fifteen? That whole scenario. Do you see that? No, uh, enlighten me. I saw he tapped in for seven when I looked up. He he hit. I'm not even sure what iron he hit, but he with his approach shot, I guess, was going for it. Uh, did the sort of thing that a lot of guys do where they sort of bail out right. But it wasn't right next to the grandstand <laughs> like like Joaquin Neiman hit, I think, some sort of fairway metal and was right up next to the grandstand. and was basically hitting through an alleyway where he got TIO relief like going straight onto the green to that pin that was all the way left. Right. Whereas Bryson, like just barely made it past that, that tree line. It was like further back. So we had this awkward little angle where he took a drop on, on really like threadbare grass. It like looked like there was, you know, not a ton of growth. There It was a funky lie. And he's kind of hitting this shot on this angle where of course that green, the front of the green slopes down to the water. So you're like, dude, he's got to get this perfectly right. Because if he hits it, with enough, you know, speed and pace to get it all the way there, it could just keep going straight and go off the back of the green, go in the water of the back. But if he tries to just kind of draw it a little bit and it goes too far left, it's in the water there. He did neither of those things. He chunked how far, it. How far was the shot, you think? I, to the pin, probably like 45 to 50 yards. To the edge of the green, maybe like 25 to 30 yards, probably. Okay. Um, and, you know, and yeah, may, I guess maybe the really cool part less. about the Masters app is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there in two seconds. Please do it. So Look, keep it. going. Keep going. So then he chunks it. He chunks it in front of, right in front of that trap on the right side of the green, bounces in the rough, drops in the water, has to drop another ball right there on the, on the bank or next to, I think he dropped on sort of a mound, chips that up there, but leaves it like 25 feet short and then misses that putt and then taps in for seven. Oh yeah, it was a circus. Oh, 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 he like he chunked it. He chunked it, chunked <laughs> he it. Chunked. I, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say he chunked it. Holy crap! All the guys behind him were like, "Whoa!" Yeah, it was, it, it, and it was, it was just. It, I was sitting with someone who was like, "Oh yeah, like that's." Uh, I chalked that up to like not playing enough high stakes golf. Like that's it's like I don't, I don't or was know. the lie really bad? I just think it was a really <laughs> bad lie. I mean, I, I, the, the, I don't think the fault is in. The, sh the third wow. shot. I think the faults in the second shot. Yeah, Why yeah, are we hitting yeah. that club there? I did help me with this one as, as a, as a layman. Why does anyone ever go for 15? Like that green just seems like it's so narrow. The There's layup. so much trouble in front and in back. The wedge shot so hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, Oh God, do you don't want to hit that wedge shot at all? Cause it's impossible. If you spin it too much, it, co it's, it comes it's on the front. A, if no, you skip it, you just, it, you're off a down slope and you're hitting to a green that, that, is so shallow and the first bounce is so big. How'd you, how'd you play that when, when you, you know, like, you know, maybe the round you shot 69, like, do you employ different strategies or do you remember much about how you played that? In I really don't. I, th I feel like I laid up a lot. 
Um, I maybe just maybe I wouldn't. went for it. I feel like I went for it maybe once or twice. Hit it in the bunker once. Uh, I never hit it in the penalty area. Humble brag. That's really good. Never hit it into Race Creek. Never hit it in to the water short at at, uh, at 15. Never hit it in the water at 17 at Sawgrass. Now I've hit it in water at a lot of other places. <laughs> but the most but We're the most iconic those places. But the most iconic. <laughs> all good. Yeah, I, I just I thought that was I thought it was interesting. I just don't know I don't know why that was the play. Maybe it's just a bad shot. Sometimes you hit bad shots, but I just I just feel like I mean 15 is such a good hole. Yeah. This whole gosh. course, man. Golly, it's just it is, so good. It it's arguably been too hard, but it's been fun, fun, fun. Um and I guess the last guy before Sander. Uh, it, it you know how I'm I've been like, I think he's, yeah, I think he's going to do something tomorrow. Dude, I, so he shoots 70 today. So he's, he shot 72, 72, and that second 72 was in terrible conditions. We just, 70. We just got to remind Xander. I that said I liked him too. I'm with you on this team. I, I think Xander needs to remind himself that if he, so often he backdoors top 10 so, so much. If, if Austin Kaiser's like, hey, Remember, we're in forty second place, and if we shoot seven under tomorrow, <laughs> we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish top ten and be like, "Oh, okay, sweet." Yeah, just, just don't him remind that. him that he's in sixth and five back, and if he shoots, if he shoots 60, 65 tomorrow, he wins by a shot, <laughs> I, which is absolutely conceivable. Like he could go out and shoot 60, 66, 67 and be right there in the mix. My favorite Masters memories are when the chasers that are four or five back go out and shoot 31 on the front. Yeah. Those are the most... Because the front nine is the more gettable nine. It's been all week. It's been a shot and a half easier. But nobody's gone out and shot 30, 31 of the guys that are on the pace. So maybe tomorrow it's set up a little favorable to, to see some early action. So that, that's where I want to end this, this journal is what do you want to see tomorrow? Like, paint me the picture. What's like your ideal... Uh, Master Sunday in 2024 with the leaderboard that we have. I, I just want something to come down to a putt on 18. That's all I care awesome. about. Is that is that too much to ask? Not at all. Play, maybe a little playoff. I guess playoff keeps us keeps us here much later. I don't want delays our time departure. Time. I will never cheer for the P word. Okay. Never. It's. I don't even want to put it in the oh air. Oh my God! There's somebody oh down God. there. Oh my God! Oh my God! That was the stout. I'm cheering from the side. We got. We got my. We got my guy Brian. That Bro. was. The, that was the spookiest thing. That was one of the. St I thought it was a snake. I thought it was a snake. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That oh my was. God. We were we were so close to closing the show, and instead, we're keeping all this in. We're keeping no, all. We're not, no, we're not editing. We're not editing. We're not editing. This was, is all great. That stuff. was Brian Kroll and uh, Ned Michaels with the old. Just creepy. How about that? We not we add with another two guests Hold on the me, show. I'm gonna check my heart. I'm gonna check my heart. Yeah, check your whoop because now we've had the dog, uh, which we don't know the dog's name, and we've had <laughs> Larry the gnome. Okay. We we now had four guests on the show this week. Yeah, whoever said we didn't book we didn't book uh, guests okay. on the on the. Let's on the see what my whoop what, says. What was your, did your whoop spike at all? Yeah, I'm up there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was at 85 knowing my like resting heart rates in the 60s or something I, I just I hope that Sunday uh at the Masters is as electric as what we just experienced sitting on this couch being Woo, surprised that is wow <laughs> my heart rate's high right now I'm gonna go edit this and stay up for like four hours that's like I could have just that was like drinking a Red Bull man that was the adrenaline rush I needed let's go <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, that's all for us. Uh, well, thanks so much for watching and listening. If you made it this far, I'm glad. I'm glad you got to experience the, probably the whole most hilarious thing on the show we've had. Yeah. Thank. Thank you for joining us, and, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> I'm Larry the Gnome. See you tomorrow. <laughs>